2020 has certainly given me lots of surprises, and one of those has to be that Cyberpunk 2077 has now been delayed to December 10th. Right now, the community is in an uproar. The Discord for Cyberpunk 2077 has reportedly been just a mess. So much anger in the community. And we're going to be breaking it all down today. We just have a lot to go over. We have some further statements coming from CDPR's executives about what's actually happening, and it's becoming clear what the actual problem is, and it seems to be the current gen versions of Cyberpunk 2077. That's why they needed an extra three weeks to work on the game. And we're also going to be going over some of the extremely nasty hostile takes, including some attacks on CD Projekt Red developers and including their responses. CDPR has also been responding to some frustration over removed features and also hyping up that we have just seen nothing yet. So yeah, a lot of Cyberpunk 2077 that we have to discuss. But today's video is brought to you by Displate. These are phenomenally well-manufactured metal posters for all kinds of artwork coming in different sizes, finishes, and frames. Displate actually has partnered with companies like CD Projekt Red with numerous beautiful Cyberpunk 2077 prints. If you are interested in getting a Displate, follow the link in the description down below. You'll be helping to support the channel, and also right now, you'll receive a 30% discount if you get one this week. Big thank you to Displate for sponsoring the video. So, we now move to the following statement or message which was delivered by CD Projekt Red studio head Adam Badowski and co-founder Marcin Owinski. This was of course posted yesterday and this is what they had to say. Today we've decided to move the release date of Cyberpunk 2077 by 21 days. The new release date is December 10th. Uh, most likely there are many emotions and questions in your head, so first and foremost please accept our humble apologies and as you're gonna see in a few just a lot of emotions, they are right, and a lot of people upset, feeling that they're, I guess you could say their vacation plans that a lot of people had already created for Cyberpunk 2077 has been ruined by this delay, which happened, I think, 22 days or 23 days away from release. And they continue saying, the biggest challenge for us right now is shipping the game on current gen, next gen, and PC at the same time, which requires us to prepare and test nine versions of it. And there's more details on specifically what's holding back Cyberpunk 2077 right now and we're gonna get to that in just a second but it seems to be the current gen version of the game but the nine versions that they're working on is the Xbox one slash X compatibility on Xbox series s slash X ps4 slash the pro version compatibility on ps5 PC and the five people that plan to play on stadia when they are doing all of this while working from home and I really think people need to understand that uh, covid 19 has ruined things this year and I really think that that really has to be pointed out when we're talking about all of the delays that happened with Cyberpunk 2077 up to this point. But they continue with their statement saying, since Cyberpunk 2077 evolved towards almost being a next-gen title, somewhere along the way, we need to make sure everything works well and every version runs smoothly. We're aware it might seem unrealistic when someone says that 21 days can make any difference in such a massive and complex game, but they really do. Some of you might also be wondering what these words mean in light of us saying we achieved gold, master, some time ago. Passing certification or going gold means the game is ready, can be completed, and has all content in it, but it doesn't mean we stop working on it and raising the quality bar. On the contrary, this is the time where many improvements are being made, which will then be distributed via a day zero patch. This is the time period we undercalculated. We feel we have an amazing game on our hands and are willing to make every decision, even the hardest ones, if it ultimately leads to you getting a video game you'll fall in love with. But yeah, um, compared to the amount of times that we've seen this yellow message this year, people are pissed. They are very, very angry, and some of it's getting very, very hostile right now. And we're going to get to that in a second, but there has been a new update as of this morning, and there was, I guess you could say, an emergency conference call from CD Projekt Red's executives, in which they talked with investors about what's happening, and we got some further insight. So the teleconference was hosted by CEO Adam Kaczynski and a couple of other board members, and this is what they said about the new release date. We are firm on it. Releasing on November 19th was possible, but having these three more weeks gives us a chance to fix this and that. The decision was not easy, but we know there's just one release, and the first impression is crucial, and I think that's what people need to understand. If they launch this game and it's broken in some ways, like if just certain aspects of the game is just unplayable, people aren't going to forget that. I, I think it's really weird how people just ignore what's happened with a lot of the AAA games in the last number of 
of years, whether that be Skyrim back in, what, 2011, the PlayStation 3 just being completely broken, Batman Arkham Knight, I believe, was broken on PC for a long time, uh, Fallout 76 was just in, kind of still is broken, Anthem, more recently, the Avengers game was a total mess, but the truth is that first impressions are critical, they are massive, a word they play a major factor in word of mouth, and while there are lots of people excited for Cyberpunk 2077, there are a lot more casual gamers which are on the fence, and they're probably going to wait until they see some reviews or hear the buzz, and if there are problems at launch, some people may just decide not to play the game, and that's something that CDPR is considering. And let's, let's continue. They say, so in the long run, the decision is beneficial for them. Better initial reaction of the game always works in favor of more sales, which is their goal. They are a company. That is why we are delaying. We don't have to, but having this extra time gives us more certainty that everything will be in the game when we release. Now, they continue about what's going on with the delay. Specifically, they say, the situation is different compared to previous changes to the deadline. This game for PC is ready and plays well on next-gen consoles, and the company is finalizing the process concerning current-gen consoles. So this is where it seems to be the problem. On the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, probably the base models, the game isn't running all that well. And yes, you want to know something? If, let's just say, Cyberpunk 2077 releases on November 19th, and then there are some huge frame drops and huge issues, you're going to see many reviewers note that in their articles giving lower review scores and there's going to be outrage, and yes, less sales will result in all of that. And I think that people that are really just working themselves up getting really angry about this. I'm disappointed myself, but I think you have to understand that this year is crazy. It's a mess. I think we all have to agree on that, but let's continue on. They say this about the game. We're really sure we have something amazing in our hands, and once the game is released, everyone will understand why it was so difficult. Don't get us wrong. We're kind of internally stressed on the one hand, but on the other, we feel very strong about the game, and we're super happy with what we will deliver. And on pre-orders, they say that right now, the ratio for pre-orders between between The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077 at the same time before the premiere is continuously very satisfying. CD Projekt expects no major cancellations of pre-orders because of the delay, and then they talk about marketing. They say there is going to be some extra supporting budget for sure to account for this change, and I mean, everything has been disrupted by this delay. The heavy marketing for this game is already underway. That November 19th release date was everywhere. We saw that during the NBA Finals, in which we saw the day debut of some trailers with Keanu Reeves front and center with that November 19th date and also some CGI footage. This has been going on for the last couple of weeks. CDPR has been hyping things up. They got some out of home marketing already. You got that huge November 19th on London buses, on trains, on billboards all over the countries worldwide and now they had to shift. So definitely there has to be some problems with the current gen versions. I, I really do think that there has to be some huge performance issues for them to have to delay it. I mean, this is something that it's unprecedented, I would say. You don't see this after a game has gone gold, but then again, I will say that going gold in this day and age is a lot different than what it was in 2004, 2003, where once you got that disc, you got that disc and that was it. So the experience had to be polished back then, but nowadays, there really isn't that. You see just update after update after release, fixing constant and lots of bugs because the scope of video games have drastically changed. Now a few more things on feedback. They said that this gives them lots of confidence. Those who completed the game for them internal testing say that they have never played a game like this before. And then the impact of delay on extensions, I believe this is just referring to the expansions planned for the game. We have expect no impact on extensions, which is probably good news to people that are excited for this game and for what comes afterwards. Now for the future impact, they say CD Projekt plans some organizational changes in technical departments. Too many things were put together at late stages, says CEO Adam Kaczynski. Now, to the many emotions and reactions of this delay, we first have Jeff Keighley saying it might be time to retire the phrase that a game has gone gold, and I could not agree more, and I already stated my specific reasons for why that probably should be gone now. Times have changed. And then Fandom points out the delay history here in 2020. Again, we started the year off with the expected release date of April 16th, and I think what's becoming more clear is that COVID 
COVID-19 and the chaotic state that is 2020 has disrupted things. Having developers not being in-house working on Cyberpunk 2077 has created challenges. And I think people have to understand, this game's been in development for eight years. Eight years. And the final push for this game, everybody had to go remote. And there's only so many things that can get done remotely. You need to have people in person doing this stuff, communicating and trying to get things fixed. And without that ability, it's created complications for CD Projekt Red clearly and obviously. But as I said before, Cyberpunk 2077 was set to launch April 16th, 2020, entering the year. But then the first delay came, I think around January, February, in which the game was moved to September, which it seemed like there was some understanding with that release date change. Then the second delay, it seems like the tone was a little different. A lot of people were upset with this, some people believing that the game was inevitably going to be delayed out of 2020, but nonetheless, it's just a lot different now here in December in which it's very divisive. There's just so much anger. In particular, it seems to be the most anger is the fact that this delay is coming so late, with only 22 or 23 days away from that November 19th date. I think a lot of people are expected, because of all the communication coming out of CDPR on Twitter and such, that the game was there's just no chance of a delay. I mean, I think they even said that the, one of the Japanese developers said that it would take a natural disaster to have Cyberpunk 2077 get delayed, and all I could say now is, yikes, but uh, we'll probably talk about that in a second. Now, another result from this delay is that Cyberpunk 2077 will first be eligible at next year's Game Awards, much like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate a few years ago, and I think a more recent example would be Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is eligible for this year's Game Awards. It wasn't for last, but it does seem like it may be CD Projekt Red up against Bethesda once again, because all expectations are that Starfield will be releasing next year, and looks like it'll be a rematch of 2015. That ought to be an interesting battle, see if Bethesda finally listens to the many criticisms that they received over the last number of years. But here are some of the old takes that I was talking about before that have just not aged well from the Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account, in which, yeah, back in early October, no more delays are happening, and they actually responded the other day to this because people were quote-tweeting it, calling CDPR liars. Like I th said, things are just getting very hostile right now, lots of people upset, but CDPR responded uh, about a day ago. Would anyone notice if we delete this real quick and then somebody said I love you guys but I don't believe you and then the cyberpunk 2077 twitter account with a, a sad face said fair enough but the specific tweet that's going around right now, people are screen capping and talking about it, is the one that came just the other day, in which the Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account said that it was full confirmation that there was not going to be a delay. As somebody said, hi, before I book the 19th off tomorrow, can I get full confirmation the game is going to come out that day? And did not age well. They said full confirmation on the 26th, and then the 27th they said, well, F. And yeah, this has been spread around a lot of frustration, a lot of people calling CDPR out for being liars. Now, we did get the specific social media developer or employee at CDPR to respond on Twitter, and this is Fabian. He said, would love to clarify what happened. I was responding via the Cyberpunk game account to a bunch of tweets last night, including the full confirmation. Great idea. Thing is, we are a publicly traded company, and it's almost impossible to tell every employee beforehand, mainly because of legal reasons. I'm aware of this and used to it, but it can be super confusing for external people. Long story short, Cyberpunk Twitter account, and therefore our studio, as it is an official channel, did not lie on purpose. I simply didn't know. Apologies. And sorry for typos. It's been a rough day, as you can probably imagine imagine. Now, the CDPR employee did respond to the fact that this tweet has gone extremely viral. He said, Twitter, if the cool things go viral, we're all happy. If the not-so-cool things go viral, we have to deal with it. Gonna be better tomorrow. But following the yellow image of death, I think that's what we should just call it at this point, because every time we see it, everybody just knows what's happening. But we did get some insight from people who have CD Projekt Red sources, like Liana Rupert, who obviously had a different perspective on the Crunch story, and she works at Game Informer. She said, I've only talked to a few people so far, really busy day, but what I'm hearing is that the team at large did not know about this, that the announcement went live to them when it went live on Twitter, if that's the case. Again, not very good. It seems like there is a dis 
disconnect clearly going on inside of CDPR with stuff like this. And then Jason Schreier followed up saying that all of them found out at the same time we did, CDPR sent an internal email simultaneously with the public tweet. The email said that they couldn't share the news earlier because again of stock regulations because they're a publicly traded company. Now though, let's get into the hostility and the attacks that are being sent to CD Projekt Red. Some of them are just people upset with the fact that the game has been delayed, some taking it a little too far. But here we have one user saying so many people are going to cancel their pre-orders now. Another user saying canceling my pre-order now, fourth time this game has been pushed back, third time actually. All my hype has been killed by this, I'm done waiting, might pick this game up when it's on sale for like 20 bucks, not giving 60 plus dollars to a company that does nothing but lie. And then one of the community managers at CD Projekt Red had people replying to his tweet, um, very explicitly. Another user wrote under the official announcement by the Cyberpunk 2077 account, You again, guys, we cannot trust in your development process. Now you have a compromise with all the community. The game should work perfect with zero bugs at day zero. These are unreal expectations. On every platform, or the shame will be all yours. If it's not, belongs to you right now already. Another user wrote, They will delay again. This game won't drop until at least April 2021. Just a lot of people not having faith now in CDPR. The game is going to need to exceed all expectations as they keep saying that it needs to be delayed to get it right. With this latest change of date, they're easily the most untrustworthy game developers ever. That's an astonishing thing to say, especially when, never mind, I'm not even gonna go on with that one. Another user actually responded to the community manager at CDPR saying, refunding to buy my key on G2A so you get less support. So, oh my gosh, people. I can expect a delay, but delaying it four times is not acceptable. I had to move my holidays every effing time. Most likely, I won't be able to get holidays in December now. The next user says, testing the bounds of anti-consumer behavior to the point of break. If the game is playable, let the people who paid for it already play whenever version exists. The next user says, LMAO, what a joke. It was understandable the first couple of times, but you said last time it would be 100% the release date. It's embarrassing for you that you need to keep pushing it back. Pro tip, say a time later than you think you'll need that way. I will also point out again, this year is kind of a mess, you know? COVID-19's kind of created challenges for everybody. On the other side of the entertainment industry, with all the movies that keep getting pushed back like a week away from its release, I don't see the pushback that the video game industry and CDPR is facing. But hey, that's just an observation that I've made. But a constant theme from a lot of users is comments like this, I took off a whole week for this, y'all are terrible, and then people are mocking this yellow image with their own, hey everyone, here we go again. Somebody else says, this is one of the most unprofessional situations I've ever witnessed. I'm not even mad for the delay itself, but 20 days before the release, come on, are you effing toying with us? You just threw out of the window your reputation as a consumer-friendly company. Another user said, just refunded the purchase. There is no point in buying a game from a developer who cannot keep their promise. When we were kids, we've learned a lesson or a valuable lesson from the boy who cried wolf story. I don't think I'll ever buy another game from this studio and... Somebody else said that the PC version isn't the one that they're having issues with. They need to let the PC version release on time. Nobody asked them to release on all platforms at once. I mean, all games do that. These developers are trash human beings and deserve to be shunned from society. And, I mean, I can't take something like this serious. It's just so ridiculous to say something like this about a video game. Another user says, F man, I booked a whole week of vacation at work. You don't do this to customers, dude. Somebody says, my fiance did too. We are beyond pissed. We took one week of vacation to play this game. All I have left is say, F this studio. You are going to lose a lot of fans and money for this. And then they said, how are they gaining respect by effing over their fans? How are they gaining respect when they have even stated the game is already finished? So they are just effing around now. Video games are a lot more complicated than that. Just because the game is finished doesn't really mean it's actually finished. It just means that it's playable. Now to just a few more takes, somebody says, I understand the decision, but a lot of us I'm sure asked for time off of our jobs to be able to play this game since you guys have said no more delays was going to happen. I have a lot in my mind with this decision. I think that this is the most reasonable take. I perfectly understand all of this anger and frustration, although with some of the tweets I've already discussed, people are just going way too far. The hostility is insane, but 
The disappointment that a lot are feeling that they set out plans and CDPRs, there's just a clear disconnect going on in that studio and that's got to get fixed because what they were saying on Twitter and such, it clearly didn't match what was going on behind the scenes because, uh, I mean, this wouldn't have happened if there was better communication, at least that's what I think. Now, we have somebody else who went to a CDPR developer's tweet about this saying, You lied to us, I'm cancelling my pre-order, which has over 150 likes. I've seen some people posting this asking for a demo as recompensation for what's happening, and again, this just shows that people don't understand how game development works, because a demo would mean weeks more of development, which would push this game back even longer. Then we have some really nasty hot takes, like this account Struggle Tweets pointed out, somebody saying, uh, I'm not even gonna read it off, just saying that they're okay with workers being starved, get this game out, they don't care if they drop dead, it's... Some people really believe that, I, I, they really do believe that, and we had somebody saying it's a fair reaction, especially after they publicly said several times that there would be no more delays, which, uh, that's not okay no matter what, people, come on, be better. And then, here we have unrelated tweets that CDPR developers are responding to, and people harassing them, saying, F CDPR, you are lying, that, and yeah, these comments go on and on, with lots of, uh, nasty responses to CDPR developers, and some of them just unrelated. This is not going to slow down. I really do wonder how CDPR can turn this the hype back on. I mean, I imagine when the release date comes and the game releases, people will be happy then, but Jesus, I've never seen so much hostility with a game being delayed. But I think the main reason why is just because of the communication that came on Twitter, which made clear that there was no more delays. And that is really the key issue here, and that's part of the problem with CDPR being so open. And I've said it before, but the Rockstar approach of just being silent up until the last month of the game's release is probably for the best. I mean, personally myself as a content creator, I love seeing all of this openness from CDPR, but it seems like from all fronts they're just getting hit, especially with all the controversies that have hit this game over the years. Now, we did see some CDPR developers reaching out on Twitter asking uh, people to, you know, be nice, be human, and understand that developers are real people, so don't harass them and send death threats. Here we have one senior game designer saying, I want to address one thing in regards to the cyberpunk delay. I understand you're feeling angry, disappointed, and want to voice your opinion about it. However, sending death threats to the developers is absolutely unacceptable and just wrong. We are people just like you. Again, I just feel very disappointed that I have to point that out, but it's like so many people just look at developers as machines and don't care at all about them being human. Now, another developer wrote on Twitter, breaks my heart to see this. I hold this community very dearly in my heart, regarded as a really friendly, warm, and supporting bunch of folks, family almost. Please refrain from doing this. We really want the best for you. Another developer is saying, this year has been awful, and I know a lot of people were looking forward to our game as a small reprieve from it, myself included. It's frustrating. With that said, I appreciate all the kind words of support for our team. Thanks. Now I'm back to not posting about the game. Another developer said, it's not like we're delaying for fun or or to annoy you at all. We've been working on this project for more than five years and pouring our hearts into it. We only get one shot at releasing this and we want to get it right for you and for ourselves. Thank you for understanding. And then a community manager at CDPR, Lalea, wrote, I've been staring at it and thinking about what to add. There's nothing more that I could add. I feel heartbroken, vulnerable, and attacked. This is not okay. So if it's not clear already, my overall reaction to everything that has happened, I tweeted I don't know how many times, I am extremely bummed out. I am disappointed by this, and I totally understand the frustration and anger that many have. Some of those tweets I mentioned before, people that set aside time for vacation for Cyberpunk 2077, I truly feel for those people because, yeah, they cannot reschedule, but some of the hostility that's going on with this, some of the attacks on developers, that's just unacceptable. And I think people need to be better, but now let's get to the next Cyberpunk 2077 subject because CDPR has been responding to some of the criticism that they have received over remote features. And this comes from first the developer Miles Tost, I believe I showed his tweet just a second ago about the delay, but this is what he said in regards to some of the removed content that they've had to make for Cyberpunk 2077. We never had dual wielding and I have said my words on techie so often. Not sure what else to say about it other than if you are unsure, please wait for reviews, check whoever you trust after it launches and get their input. Not every 
game is for everyone. We don't have the power to change that, haha. Ha. No one is forcing you to buy the game day one, and no one at CDPR wants you to be disappointed with a game you might not enjoy. Having said that, on the topic of cut features, cutting features and scope is a very normal part of development. You can witness it so openly with our game, because we happily gave in to community wishes and showed you that 2018 demo. Think about it, the game two years from release. Of course, we iterate and change stuff, and of course, we also will have ideas that sound great on paper, but then it doesn't end up working out well in the game with all the other features. Witcher 3, we also cut a ton of stuff, but in the end, all of it made the game better. Now, I understand this is disappointing for everyone when it happens, and also difficult to understand without all the context of development environment. But in this case, I just kindly ask you for your trust. Just look at the stories of so many other games you might enjoy. Believe me when I say that during their development, some loved features also were cut and you still enjoy them today. Maybe even because of the cuts. In the end, it is all about how much fun the game and its systems provide you, and we are doing our best to make sure it is as great of an experience as it can be. Sometimes for that, you have to make some hard decisions, and this time around, you were here to witness it. And that's really the key with Cyberpunk 2077. And I said this in regards to the delay stuff, but being so open has negatively impacted CDPR in some ways. People have heard so much about this game's development, so many interviews have been done. People have set their expectations on gameplay and stuff which has attached to it that this is a work in progress and it's not representative of the final version. I think people just ignore that. And as Miles was responding on Discord, he was referencing dual wielding. That's not something that was ever mentioned. There's just a lot large amount of misinformation out there with people making assumptions of features that just never were at all even discussed by CDPR developers. So yeah, dual wielding never happened. Multiple apartments and customization, that was a removed feature. Third person cutscenes to a degree, but that was overstated by so many. Flathead was supposed to be like a companion spider bot or something. Still in the game, I guess you could consider that a removed feature. Subway transportation, again, this was something that was never necessarily confirmed to be actually in the game, although I think there was some mentions of it in a 2018 interview. Again, there's a difference between 2018 versus now, and that's just an example of some of the sacrifices that CDPR had to make. Flying vehicles is another good example. That was never at all something that was in the game. It was something that CDPR wanted to do, but it just never worked out. Vehicle customization was always mentioned to be something that was going to be very, very minor, but again, it just didn't work out. Wall running, another example of something that didn't work out and that had too much design problems. The techie class was broken down into other skill options and stuff. There are no actual classes in Cyberpunk 2077. Technically speaking, there are a bunch of skills and perks which serve that purpose, so you can make your own class in that way, but there is no specific, you just pick a solo or a net runner or a techie class. Now, Miles did have a further response that he added on Discord. He said that, If you worry about the amount of content in our game, please don't. We're notoriously bad at judging how long game time is in our games. I remember we estimated players would max out Witcher 3 at 100 hours, so we try not to do that anymore. But I can only keep saying what I have been saying in the past. You guys have seen nothing yet. It's less than a month now. Well, more than a month now. Soon all your questions will be answered, hopefully satisfyingly, and I can't wait for you all to play. Play it finally, been a long time coming. So Lots of these developers, all these employees at CD Projekt Red are extremely passionate about this game. They're all disappointed by this, like you and I are. And of course, I can understand some of the frustration that some are feeling, and I personally do feel that this game is going to release December 10th. I just don't see how it's possible another delay could happen at this point. CDPR is literally on the last leg at this point. They are working on the Game Zero Day patch. The game has already entered certification. It's already being printed. The actual game copy has gone gold. Bandai Namco and Warner Brothers are printing copies right now for the game, as they are the publishers of Cyberpunk 2077 in certain territories around the world. And I think that's just gotta be pointed out. I do not think another delay is coming, but I totally understand why so many people just don't have faith in any of this at this point. I actually put a poll up on my Twitter account asking all of you, do you have faith in this new release date? And maybe this is third time's the charm, but right now people do not have faith. They say about 57% of you say that no, you believe that the game is going to be delayed next to 2021, and I really do hope that you are wrong, but hopefully CDPR can refuel the hype because right now there's just a lot of disappointment in the air, and that is not a good thing as Cyberpunk 2077 is now just around 40 days away from release. Anyway, let me know what are your thoughts on Cyberpunk 2077 being delayed down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos. Links are 
always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter, giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games. And again, thank you for joining, consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.